Well, you may you may not have uh, seen in one of the slides, but we had a request for fifty-eight million dollars of additional money, and that was the, what we call the legitimate request list, the good proposals that we really had approved but could not find the money for. Uh, this year, of course, the pay raise for faculty and staff. By the way, let me quickly say, well deserved, very well deserved. Uh, choose up more than all of the tuition increase. So not only could we not fund the entire slate of worthy proposals, but we've got to find new money from other sources just to pay the pay raise. So it's a very lean budget. We think that 3.25% is uh, prudent. It's something that we hope that our in-state residents could live with. Of course, it will cost more to out-of-state students. So it's about 300-ish dollars a year more for in-state students, three something, and over $900 a year more for an out-of-state student. What are some of those proposals that had to fall by the wayside? Well, uh, we are uh, constantly uh, recruiting and hiring more academic advisors. So that's a plan that we have to uh, accelerate that. We had to kind of put the brake on that a little bit. There are uh, buildings that require what we call deferred maintenance, and because we didn't get new fresh money for that from the state, we've had to defer that, so we'll plug the leaks and put some paint up and have to do those in the future. Many other things as well, but the provost could give you more specifics. Most of them were in the academic arena. Where are you going to be looking for for more revenue? We talked about the idea that the, the tuition increase doesn't cover, of course, the increases that were mandated by the legislator, legislature. What? Uh, where do you? Where do you well, find those other revenues? Well, you know, it's hard, but I think uh, we'll be looking to uh, export our high-quality online educational offerings. Uh, right now, they, we focused on South Carolina. I think it would be an interesting opportunity for us to see how we could serve more students around the country in the online programs that we already already offer in state and see if there's a market for them nationally and even globally. <clears throat> That's one area and of course we'll always be looking for ways to negotiate better contracts with food service, with with uh, other vendors to reduce reduce our costs. As well as in some increased fees as well. I mean, it's a good there idea there have been a few limited fee increases as well, as you heard of today. The other thing is, looking back, going back to 2003, tuition has doubled. The number of students on campus has grown by a third. To those folks who just remember the days when there weren't so many students on campus, when it seemed to them more affordable to go to USC, you know, what is what is your message to those folks who say, it just seems to, both of those have seemed to have just gotten out of control? Well, actually, most of the people who speak to me are happy with the buzz. Certainly the local community, business community, the what I'll call the retail community, the restaurateurs. So think of Columbia having not grown. Think of Columbia having shrunk, what that would mean to the merchants and others in the area. But the other thing I'd say is quality has not been cut. And if you listen in my closing moments, I thank the board not only for passing a small tuition increase, moderate, small, but for allowing us to invest in the quality that without that the students wouldn't come. And by the way, let me, let me quickly say that without the increase in the size of the student body, tuition probably would have tripled by now. You said doubled. Probably would have tripled because you can't not recruit more students to pay more tuition uh, and continue to uh, provide the quality that we insist on.